This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill, and today we are talking about how to make money with Airbnb. According to CNBC, the average Airbnb host makes around a thousand bucks per month with their short-term rental. That extra cash could potentially be a big deal for you and maybe make a sizable dent in your family's financial goals. Could hosting an Airbnb be a side hustle or a small business that's right for you? Well, to help you decide, I've invited Wendy Hill Manson on the show today. Wendy is a full-time high school teacher based in Michigan, and she's been side hustling as an Airbnb super host for the past year or so. In her first full year with short-term rentals, she made over $100,000, and that was during the pandemic. We're going to chat with Wendy today about how she got her start, how she was so successful, and some tips for others who are considering giving Airbnb a go. Oh, and another thing, not only is Wendy a savvy side hustling entrepreneur, but she's my sister as well. Welcome to the show, Wendy. Well, thanks for having me, Andy. <laughs> Absolutely. It is a joy to talk to my sister. And I, even though we're doing it at a social distance right now uh, during quarantine, and I couldn't see you during the holidays, which stunk, right. but it, it's, it is what it is. So, Wendy, take us back. So, why did you decide to get started with short term rentals and Airbnb in the first place? Well, my, my in-laws had been Airbnb at their basement uh, for a couple years, and we noticed they were going on a couple cruises to exotic places every year, and we're like, wow, okay, you know, that's pretty cool that you guys are doing that, um, you're a pretty savvy thing to take on in your late 70s. They enjoy cooking and hosting, and so we thought, okay, that's a good fit for them, but then we thought, okay, that'd be kind of a pain in the butt to have someone be in your house. Um, and then I visited a, a girlfriend of mine who re reno- you know, she renovated her basement. She made it, she took out all that wall to wall carpeting that you might have in a basement when you have kid toys, when the kids are younger and you want to play down there in a playroom. And she put in hardwood floors and a really nice bathroom and a sauna. And I thought, oh my God, that's so nice. I want to do that to our basement, which was, you know, kind of getting run down after being a play area. And then there's like a kitchenette area in that basement as well. And I'm like, oh crap, we don't have the money to do that. And then I thought, oh, hmm, I wonder if we could maybe, you know, do that and then make the money back by making at a rental that coupled with the fact that we were about to you know pay for two college tuitions at the same time and daunting task and didn't know where we would get that money from so I thought gee maybe I'll be able to make enough money to do the renovation which is uh, thing something that I like to do and then also maybe make some money for uh, to help pay for college tuition because we were just paying for those bills as they came in or you know at the last possible moment we were hoping we didn't have to refinance to pay for college so I was kind of thinking this might be a good thing to do that's a that's a great motivation not only get to have an updated house but you get to start a small business and help your kids get through college, which is not a small thing when you have three boys that are just a few years apart. So that can be quite a bit of money nowadays. So when, when you when you started this idea and you, you said to uh, your husband, who's my awesome brother-in-law, who's also been on the show, uh, what were his initial thoughts when, when you brought it up to him? You know, as most marriages are, we're kind of yin and yang. I love change. I love redecorating and I love... Um, you know, moving the furniture around and I love, you know, things changing all the time. And he doesn't, he doesn't like change. He likes things predictable. He's pretty financially frugal. So he was not happy about the idea. The space had kind of gotten a little rundown. He was using it for years as a brewery space, half of it, the kitchenette area. And the other half, like I said, was kind of like a, you know, a carpeted area that was once where we place where we had toys. And then as the kids were teens and through high school, there was just some yucky couches down there and a big TV and video games. And so it was really gross, kind of smelly after three teenage boys had used it for years. And so I thought, oh, yes, such a gross space. But then when I, I kind of had to strike a deal with him, I said, okay, listen, I'm going to, you know, we're going to forward this money uh, that we have saved for the next college installment, which are huge. <laughs> and I want to put this into uh, this renovation. And I think, you know, we kind of live in a, a vacation town. I said, I think I can make the money back for the renovation. And then I think it can start making money for us for college. So he kind of said, okay, I'll let you do it. So we, we went for it. I love it. I love it. So, so talk to me about the steps that you took 
after that where it was like, all right, this thing's a go. How did you start to prepare the room to become a rental? Right. Um, yeah. So I kind of described it already. Half of the basement was um, really old carpeting, like 15 year old carpeting um, that had had, you know, kids down there um, eating food and playing video games and sleepovers and stuff. And it just kind of resigned myself to, to just be their area. <laughs> it got, that was a bad decision because it got pretty gross. And then the other half was sort of um, where David and his friends would brew beer and stuff for years. So there was like a linoleum tile in the kitchenette area that was gross, you know, um, and then um, the, the carpeting, like I said, just needed to be done. There was a bathroom down there with a sauna already, but the flooring was really gross and there was no heat um, in that bathroom. So it wasn't a really practical bathroom, especially if you were a girl that had to sit on the toilet because you'd freeze your butt off because we live in a northern climate. And so it was cold without any heat. So what we did was um, we did basically the whole flooring of the whole space. So we had this, you know, this uh, linoleum flooring that looks like hardwood, it looks pretty, it's really durable. So it looks like there's hardwood uh, down there in the basement. So we did the kitchen area with the same stuff as the um, like big TV room area, which I ended up turning into a bedroom and a TV room area for the guests. Um, and then the bathroom, we laid down heated floors, which are a really great alternative for small spaces. Um, you can buy them uh, and you can lay down that pad and then you put the tiling on top of it. Um, I had a tile guy do all the tiling because um, my husband has done tiling in the past. <laughs> He's really good at a lot of things, but um, so I would say there's some things that it would be really good to hire out for um, just because it gives a more high end feel so we had the heated floors um and the tiles are like mar marble tiles and so it really upgraded the whole bathroom that's about it i mean uh, investing in the furniture we put two clean beds down there um a new tv um you know like kind of some more modern furniture and uh, a bookshelf so it kind of felt more like a, a more like a studio suite space i love i've stayed there everybody <laughs> it does feel like a studio it's fantastic and it's a great <laughs> rental property or great rental space for 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 your home so talk to me about the investment side of things you said we had to take some money from the college fund to throw it in there H how much did you invest or a roundabout and then did you make it back yeah so i'd say about between seven and ten thousand dollars and then we were able to make that back right away probably about two or three months Two or three months. Yeah. So that, okay. So yeah. you made you made the back you made the investment back, and then you started making money from there. Yep, we did. That's incredible. That's incredible. Okay, so talk to me about the early process because you're you're new at this. You, you you like redecorating. You like making the changes and things like that. But obviously, there was probably some mistakes in the beginning that you were making as a new Airbnb yeah. host. So can you talk to us about some of those mistakes? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you're sharing your home. This is a home share situation. Our first Airbnb experience that we did as a home share. Um, as opposed to buying another home and renting out that other home or renting out like an apartment building to, to different people. And when you do a home share, there's a lot of things to consider. First off, do you want to share your living space with strangers? Uh, Airbnb and VRBO and all of those short-term rental companies do vet people, but they don't. I mean, it's just like kind of how Uber vets people, right? I mean, as long as you have a good rankings and the person that you accept has a lot of good rankings, then, you know, you're kind of <laughs> hoping that they're good people. So with that being said, you know, kind of taking that into account and making sure that you're up for that and everyone in your family is up for that. You know, I, I do have one son that, you know, still is at home um, in high school. And so I had to be like, okay, remember that sleepover area that uh, you, you were looking forward to taking over once all your brothers were at college? That's not yours anymore so that we can pay for your college. <laughs> so he's okay with that. Um, he understood. He, I mean, he had the rest of the house to himself. He didn't have to share it with his other brothers because they were already gone. So communicating with your family members and making sure that everyone's game for a home share um, and everyone knows, you know, okay, you know, how we're going to kind of live our lives when people are sharing our home with us. The biggest mistake that I made, I would say, is noise. <laughs> the house, it was built in 1908 and I am, like, a, like you said, a high school teacher and I get up and go to school anywhere between like 6 and 6.30 in the morning and, uh, you know, wearing my school shoes on my... Uh, hardwood floors above these people that are on vacation, that was pretty noisy. So we learned, you know, barefoot, you know, put your shoes on right when you walk out the door, especially be quiet uh, in the mornings when we're up early and the people are on vacation. Um, another thing is I would say sleep in the space that you have created or have someone that you trust sleep in the space that you created and they'll give you honest feedback. 
and just try and think, okay, what would make me feel uncomfortable? It was, like I said, a basement. And so there's like half windows in the bedroom area. I don't think I had sufficient window treatments. And so someone um, left me my first negative review was that there was no window coverings. And I would say also communicate with your, with your guests. When you uh, communicate with them, either by texting or if you greet them, say, please let me know of anything you know, before you leave it in the review, because I'd like to correct it. And I don't want that to be something that would bring me down. There's lots of suggestions uh, on different websites on how you can word that politely so that you can basically say, hey, if something's wrong, let me know. I want to fix it right away. I don't want that to be a reason that you give me two stars. Because <laughs> uh, that'll kill you. Uh, your whole Airbnb business, just like Uber or anything where you have stars, is the reason that people book. They want to book with people that have five stars, that have a lot of reviews. You know, And it just depends on your home. It, that You're going to find different things. So and if you communicate with your, your guests, you'll be able to solve them. <laughs> well, that's incredible. So it, sound, it sounds like you had a lot of learnings. Uh, you learned communication was big. You liked the process enough because you guys were making some money, even even with the maybe inconveniences of, of having to share your home with other people. It made sense for you to continue doing it, so much so that you guys decided to get another place. Is that right? Yeah, the house next door to us was for sale for many years. It's a big Victorian house um, that I've always loved. I have a beautiful gardens in front and um, architecture is just gorgeous. And it was for sale for several years. And I was like, okay, how can I buy this house? <laughs> yeah, I talked I to us about that. How did you get it? I kind of tried to see how that would be financially possible. Yeah. Like I said, we couldn't even afford to uh, make the next college payment at that time. But um, with the basement coming in, I was pretty secure with that being able to pay for the college tuition for the kids, especially when we had one graduate and we only had one in college at a time. That was a little bit better. But uh, how do you buy uh, a really big house like that when you don't have that down payment that you need? So what we did was very, very against my brother's principles of no. saving money. And <laughs> You're an investor. There's well, no, we were forget the, the brother principles here, man. Your podcast <laughs> and we were like, okay, yeah, we're going to pay off our mortgage. We're getting there. This is great. And we were getting really close to paying off our mortgage and following all of your rules. And then I'm like, hmm, how do we've almost got this mortgage paid off? And we went to the bank and refinanced our house to the maximum and took that money and used that for the 20% down. Um, another thing that will make my financial brother unhappy is that wasn't enough money. <laughs> you needed to have 20% down when you buy a commercial property. And uh, when we refinanced, that wasn't, we didn't have the 20%. We were shy of the 20%. So um, my husband, David, <laughs> went into his 401k. And we are not of the right age to take it out without penalty. So he took out that money um, without with penalty. I think it was like a 30% penalty, which is pretty hard to swallow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's how we got that 20% down for that house. Was that the question that you yeah, asked? Yeah, yeah. Just like, how did, you, how did you go about getting the mortgage? And yeah, you know, you know the, the, the whole paying off the mortgage thing. You, you, I'm all about doing whatever you need to do oh, so to make your, like, your you best financial life. <laughs> This isn't grill so, your sister hour here. Still our goal. Still our goal to pay down all of those mortgages. It's so, definitely a good thing. So you ended up getting the the loan through the bank. And I know it's different than getting for people who have never done a, a rental property or something like that. It's it's different from getting just a, a mortgage for your house, right? What what is the difference? Yeah. The difference is you're not going to get as good of an interest rate. Your interest rate is going to be a little bit higher, although right now interest rates are crazy good. Um, if you're thinking about opening a business, I know it seems like a stupid time, but it's really not. It's a good time because their interest rates are quite low right now. They were pretty low when we did it um, last October. Was it last October? It was October 2019 is when we did it. And so they were pretty reasonable. I think I got like 4.5% for a business loan. So that was pretty good. Um, and then when we refinanced our house, we were able to get a lower interest rate on the new higher mortgage. So you're going to pay a higher interest rate and you're going to need 20% down, especially if it's your first investment property. They won't, they won't give it to you without that. Even, I mean, my husband has other loans for other businesses as well, but they need that um, to make it a secure loan. So yeah. you ended up securing the house right next to where you live. So, I mean, that's lives, super yeah, convenient. Door. I'm sitting in the rental property right now, looking out the window at my house. <laughs> that is great. So it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people who do like long distance Airbnb or, or just even in the same town, but maybe 15 minutes away. Like there's got to be something 
to just having it right next to your house. I mean, that, that just seemed too good to be true, right? Especially with this older home that we've spent a lot of time renovating, there's always something. Luckily, uh, my husband likes fixing things. <laughs> he likes solving <laughs> problems, and it's just right next door to us, so we can just usually pop right over and see what the problem is. We've just getting used to it now. <laughs> That's incredible. So talk <laughs> to us fun. about the amount of work, I guess, the things that you've done to this house, and how does that compare to the, to the basement? I mean, that was just a, a small yeah. amount compared to what you've done now, right? Yeah, I think that basement experience kind of gave me the confidence that if you, um, you know, kind of uh, put some money into something, then maybe you can get that return. The old adage uh, takes money to make money, right? Yeah. <laughs> Even if you borrow the money from somewhere else, someone else. Um, so uh, I kind of thought, okay, what would make this space be super comfortable? I think the reason that we were able to get a really good price on this house was it was on the market for a long time. Um, because there was a quite a bit of cat piss smell in the house. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was cats. My brother just got two cats for Christmas, yes. everybody. <laughs> yeah, we like those. They haven't pissed in my house yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> so train them not to piss Yet, I said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, everywhere that there was wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, there was that horrible odor that just, you know, kind of hits you in the face. So um, we pulled out all the wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, and there was beautiful hardwood underneath. And we refinished the hardwood floors in the rooms that had wall-to-wall. -wall. Not all the rooms had it, but um, there were several. And then uh, the basement was where I think the cat preferred to visit a lot. <laughs> I have heard and... from, from people I've interviewed on the show that the, the smell that you want to smell when you walk into a potential rental property is cat piss because, because it's really not that expensive to get rid of it yes because it because it, it gets a bunch of people away and it's not yep. like you said not that expensive to take care of right so we redid the floors with the same flooring that i used in the other basement renovation we put new flooring in that basement um it had like um tile flooring that wasn't that bad but the smell had just permeated the tile so we pulled that out and um it was a little dated um and we put in that um wood wood faux wood flooring and painted the, the walls with like kills, um, you know, white, just white, everything. Everything I'm doing is trying to get it like pure, white and clean and sanitary, COVID free. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that kind of got rid of the odor. Um, and so that was uh, one of the, but the house, I mean, the people that lived in it before um, the college student was here with his cat for a while, um, really renovated it and, and brought it back to its 1898 you know glory none of the woodwork was ever painted which is very difficult to find in a victorian home um so there was a lot of really really cool features to the home that we did nothing we just kind of like hey here's this you know wallpaper from the 1920s check it out it's gorgeous a really special place i think if you can have a place that um, has a little bit of the history but then it has modern and amenities um like the the kitchen was already redone when we bought the house um the wall wall color was kind of orange which i changed to white but um other than that it was you know granite countertops and brand new cook stove and everything really pretty yeah. um you, you've described we, it like exactly how you because because the home is older but you've taken it in a way that is new and modern and fun and clean. I had a chance to stay there for a month during quarantine last April. Uh, we're now, now this is uh, going live in February, uh, last April. Uh, and it was great. It's beautiful though. I love the work that you've done to it. Uh, one question I had as you're talking about these updates and investments you've done. So like the basement, you guys said, Hey, we're going to take some money and go in and invest it. Now, you guys probably spent a lot of money to update this place. Are you going to get to a point in the, in the near future where that's been paid back or, or where are you in the, in, in that oh, process? You David, haven't you? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, you, you did say that we made uh, quite a bit of money this year, but yeah. all of the money we put back into the house. Yeah. Um, we redid the, ba the bathrooms weren't redone. They had like plastic showers and um, they were kind of chintzy. Well, there was one very beautiful bathroom uh, on the main floor that was um, great and marble tiles and everything. So we redid, um, the bathroom upstairs. Um, and we're, we're putting a, a sauna in this house as well. We're in the process of doing that and another bathroom and a workout room. Um, because I think those are things that people want when they travel. Um, we, that, like I said, this is, um, a bit of a tourist town, mostly in the summer, cause we're a Northern, um, Northern college town. The winter time is kind of scary for the people to come and visit because <laughs> we get a lot of snow, but that's good for people that want to play in the snow. If you want a mountain bike ride or you want to ski at our ski hill, um, so part of that being outside, um, being near the, um, you know, the 
cold is you want to come back in. And one thing that we do here is uh, we sauna. So that's, I think, a reason why I made so much money right away with my basement renovation in my other home is because we had a sauna. Because I spoke with my mother-in-law and she's like, oh, no, we're kind of dead in the winter in our um in our Airbnb rental in our basement. And I'm like, we weren't at all. We were crazy busy. And I, so that's why we're putting uh, a sauna in this house. Cause I think that'll help during the um, off months. People um, will come hopefully year round. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, uh, t- uh, having those features is probably a big deal for Airbnbs. Cause, cause every, every, every other home will just kind of wash away. If you'd be like, Oh, this one has a sauna. I know for my wife, whenever we're looking for a place, it's like, does that place have a hot tub? Does that place yeah. have a hot tub? <laughs> and right. choose it based on the hot tub. So I got, it's well, probably the same you thing. Search for it, you put that in your search engine. And so you're just seeing what you want to find. Um, so it makes a huge difference. If you have those features or those special things that make it more experiential, you know, some people, or they might not even find your house if you don't have what they're looking for. So give people an understanding of, of, of what the house, how many rooms are in the house? Like what, what kind of, what kind of home is this? This is a triplex. So the main part of the home, it's really a five bedroom. Um, but, uh, our city ordinances, which we should talk about our city ordinance uh, only allows you to rent four bedroom Airbnbs. So one of the bedrooms we've made into a home office in the main rental In the main rental, you get three floors, the whole, basically the whole front of the house, the the three, three floors and, um, uh, five bedroom, well, four bedrooms, and uh, it will be four full baths once we finish the sauna renovation. Um, And then there are two apartments in the back of the house, which we also, we Airbnb one of them, and then the the other apartment is a long-term renter. And um, so there's lots of space. So we have, we went from having a basement rental to having three more rentals after that, once we bought this house. And that was, so when did you start with the basement rental? I guess, when was that? Was that middle of 2019? 2018. 2018. 2018. Uh, so when did I start on it? Um, let's see. I think it, yeah, it was September, 2018. Okay. So within about, call it Year two before. years, you've had, you've gone from the basement yeah. rental 2019 to- 2019 is when we bought this house when okay. we bought so we did their basement rental for a year mm-hmm. and then we did then we bought this house wow okay very cool so yeah. if you had to look back one year ago would it surprise you to tell yourself uh, we're gonna make a hundred thousand dollars doing oh my Airbnb god rentals <laughs> no way would i have ever thought that <laughs> um yeah yeah so- i was just hope i mean we had always wanted to get a rental property we live in a college town and we know other friends who have had rental properties and they've had success with it and it's a good way to invest your money um especially when who knows what's going to happen with the market yeah. um with this year you know going into cash and going into rental properties are probably a safer bet uh for people and so we knew we wanted to do that we just life is crazy life goes by quickly and you find other things to spend your money on we just really didn't find the perfect one um, so we just kind of wanted to, to buy one that we could pay the mortgage on and maybe fix it up. That was our goal. Um, we never thought that it would be something that we could eventually allow me to retire earlier or, you know, allow us me to have an income once I retire from teaching. So is that what you see? So talk to us about the plans now. So you've done a, a big investment into the home. It's really nice and updated and it's going to be a place that, or is a place that people are clamoring to come to even during the pandemic, you guys were full. So what, what are your long-term goals for this? And what does that mean for you and your husband? Yeah. Um, I will have 25 years of teaching in two and a half years. Uh, so I can retire if I, if we can afford to do that. The goal is uh, to retire from teaching and then um, do rental properties, either short term or long term. Uh, I really enjoy fixing up homes that need it. And, and I really enjoy being an Airbnb hostess. Our city has a limit on the number of Airbnbs that we can have in the city. So if I if we can't get more Airbnb properties, then maybe we'll just have rentals. So we'll see. That's kind of, I like it. So we'll see <laughs> how it goes. It's good. It's good to like it. So no, obviously we've talked about a lot of great things and we did talk about some lessons learned. What are, what is maybe like your least favorite thing about doing Airbnb hosting? Just so people can see both sides. Um, I mean, the home share is tough. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, we stopped the home share for quite a few months so that we could, um, not worry about tiptoeing around guests or, um, you know, if family wants to come visit, not worry about their children being loud. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my children. <laughs> <laughs> 
so I think that's the hardest part. So, um, and, and that's the good thing about being a short-term renter, you know, property manager is that you could choose, you can get into it maybe by sharing your space that you already have. And then you can use that money that you make from that to maybe buy a separate property so that you don't have to do the home share. It just depends on the guests. We've had some guests that we just, we, the coolest people in the world that we were like, never would have met if we didn't share a home with them. And then we've had some hellish guests as well (laughs) that we won't talk about (laughs) that makes you like, okay, I'm closing it down and I'm not going to rent anymore for quite a long time. And then you kind of forget about it and realize (laughs) it's part of doing business. But I mean, my husband deals with, um, you know, he was a salesperson before he was in an industry, customer industry. So dealing with customers and making people happy, um, they pay you back with the joy that they have and the experience. So that is, is fun, but there's ups and downs with it, certainly. Um, and we've kind of gotten numb to the problems that happen, you know, the broken toilets or the things that you deal with as a a property manager. Once you fix things that you think are difficult and super, you know, labor intensive and you're like, okay, here are the steps to do that. Once you learn how to do kind of the basic things, I mean, we've had radiators start to crack and leak and drip through the vents in the kitchen. And you're like, you walk in and you freak out and it's like the stuff that you would, you know, make you want to never buy a house like this. But then you're like, okay, you just call the plumber and the plumber comes and, or you turn off the water first. <laughs> That's the first thing that you do. <laughs> call the plumber and you figure it out and you, you fix it, you know, and have um, always have a fund. I tried to have um, a pretty sizable separate account with or I can't swear on this, can I? No, you can't swear. Okay. <laughs> oh, poo poo fund. <laughs> the oh, <poo-poo> fund. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, where if, so that it's not as horrible. It's not as catastrophic. It's, it's just, okay, this is the cost of doing business. We yeah. have to deal with issues and problem solve. <clears throat> and then are, once you solve it and deal with it, it's kind of rewarding. <laughs> yeah, those are really good points. I, I think the it's, the last point you said really resonates with me because Nicole and I have talked about getting rental properties and I'm always just worried about the, the things I got to fix when I've got kids at home and I got to go do these other things. But if you set you it up- Nicole. I know, about? totally. I'm you not going to fix anything. <laughs> she will. I can't believe you put in that hot water tap thing. Like oh. I wouldn't even really keep that on. It's so nice uh, that you said we it, because she did it all. <laughs> yeah, she did. Uh, um, I and, and David is the same way. I, I, I'm the one that calls all of the repair people and know the right people that will respond. Actually, David calls them too, but he, he likes to fix things himself. So if you have someone in your, your, your spouse or you that like to fix things, great. Um, but that's not the end of the world. If you don't like fixing things and you hate doing things like that, um, I find that sometimes you might save money by having a professional do it because they'll do it quicker, they'll do it faster, they won't break things. And the time value of your money might be more to have a professional do it. So you get a list of really good people that you know that you can call uh, when, when there's emergencies and that you pay them right away so they come back right away when you call them. It's just a system that you build up. I love it. I'm, I'm feeling a theme, communication, treating people with respect, and it comes back your way as well. So I love, love I love this, Wendy. Thank you. So if somebody's listening right now and they are inspired, maybe they want to start an Airbnb. What's the first step they should take following this chat? Yeah, the first step, um, which is super, super important, is to make sure that you can have an Airbnb in your town. Um, I've, I'm on a couple of short-term rental, um, Facebook groups, and there's this horror story sometimes that people post that they bought this investment property. Maybe they did what I did, you know, they found the money somehow creatively and they bought it and they're like, okay, let's go, let's start making money. And then they find by calling their zoning that they can't do that. <laughs> and then you, you sh- got to do your research before you buy a property, make sure that property is okay. Especially condos, condo associations have rules and you think, oh, I just won't tell anyone. No, Z- our zoning in our city, and I'm sure other zonings in other cities go to those sites and they can see the properties that are listed there. They can find them on the map and you can't hide. Uh, you might feel like the internet is so anonymous, but it's not. So make sure that um, you check city zoning um, for us. I'm not sure if all cities are the same. They'll, they referred us to the fire department and the fire department came uh, through and you have to have a fire inspection to have a rental property. The rental property rules are more strict for short-term rentals than they are, at least in our town, for long-term rentals. Um, so you got to make sure that you have all of those you know, things um, 
so that you have the right barriers or whatever else the fireman usually will come and tell you that free of cost before you pay for the official inspection so that you can fix things. So I would call zoning and then I then I would call the fire department and ask if they could give you a free inspection and tell you what you need to fix before your formal inspection um, where you get your, your renting license. So you got to get your renting license. Um, I would also speak to if you're um, doing home share uh, and you're starting to do that uh, to get your foot into the door of short term rentals, then you need to call your insurance agent and make sure that they know that you're doing that and that you have strangers in your home coming in and out of your uh, house. Uh, and so you just get a rider um, on your insurance for that. Um, gosh, there's so much. Do you want me to keep going? Well, we, we don't want to overwhelm people. We just want to give them that first step. But I think that is fantastic to say, make sure you can actually do Airbnb before you plunge in and yeah. make the investment. I can't imagine. I'm sure it sound, sounds like that's a frequent thing that's happening. So, well, if people want to follow your journey, I know you're a big on Instagram or maybe they want to rent the Onion Tower. Where, where should they go? Where's the best place for them to uh, to find more information about you? Yeah, um, if you just Google search Hewitt Onion Tower, it's such a unique name that that will probably uh, give you a list of the links to find our Facebook page to follow. I kind of post um, a lot of our adventures on our renovations that we've been doing, especially since we've been closed um, most recently during COVID. I post a lot of renovations. So if you like home renovations, even if you're not thinking about renting or uh, doing an Airbnb and you, you want to see what this what we've been doing with this Victorian home, you can check out that Facebook page. It's Hewitt Onion Tower on Facebook, uh, also Hewitt Onion Tower on Instagram. Um, and then if you Google search Hewitt Onion Tower, our Airbnb listing will come up for that as well as we list it on VRBO as well. Absolutely. Well, Marquette, Michigan is one of our favorite places to visit in the world because, well, mostly because you're there, but we also just love the, the nature, being able to go outside and enjoy uh, you know, parks and hiking and their beautiful beaches. So if you guys are looking for a great place to stay, consider it and uh, tell them Andy sent you. <laughs> yeah. So Wendy, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you sharing the story. Thanks for having me, Andy.